Alright, we're still hanging out in the boiler room. We just got done doing the uh, oil filter off the tank. I just did the pump screen on this Riello burner. Now we're going to do the nozzle. Now keep in mind that the uh, process I go through is going to be the same or similar in a lot of other boiler burner setups, okay? Uh, and I also want to remind you that the uh, videos I've put in this playlist do not replace having a certified professional come in, uh, do a full diagnostics and tune up on your, on your uh, boiler or furnace, okay? This is intended to give you some basic understanding and do some basic maintenance, all right? Let's go ahead and get this uh, nozzle replaced. All right, first thing we're going to do is remove this control box here. This one's got a small screw on the side. You could also use a small socket or nut driver. It's not necessary to remove it all the way because it's, it's slotted. So once that's loosened, you can just kind of grab a hold of it and pull back. Then tip it up and it comes right off, okay? All right, next I'm going to remove this uh, uh, supply line here that goes to the nozzle from the pump. And I'm going to use a 12 millimeter uh, wrench on that. This one happens to be a tubing wrench, but it's not necessary. And you might lose a little bit of uh, oil here, but probably not much, if any. Uh, not enough to warrant a catch pan, okay? Okay, next we need a number two Phillips for this screw, and then this screw right here. Okay, we'll remove this one first. It's a little cover. And then this one here. And be sure not to drop any of them. Now we're just going to go ahead and grab a hold of this and pull it out. And you're going to have to twist it to get this uh, line out. Okay. And that's it right there. And that's the nozzle we're replacing. What we'll do is we'll go out to the table so we can get a better look at it. All right, so we're going to remove a set screw, and it's right there. It's a Phillips. Again, it may be a little bit different on your burner assembly, but uh, it should be pretty much the same. And uh, it'll slide right out, and you can see that uh, it, there's only one way it can go. Um, so the set screw sets right into that sort of divot, okay? Now we're going to use a couple of wrenches uh, to get this out of here. All right, so these nozzles are specific to your burner, boiler, furnace setup, okay? They basically take the oil at a high pressure and create a fine mist, okay? Which is why it's so important to have, um, you know, your filters change, your screen change, and this nozzle can become clogged as well, okay? So it's a real fine uh, nozzle, as you can see, and they're specific again to the um, to the setup. Um, I've even seen after having a, a cleaning done, uh, the person with this Biazi uh, boiler in, in Riello, it's not really a common uh, nozzle for it, and the person used the wrong nozzle. Uh, but they generate different uh, spray patterns, right? So they're cone-shaped, and some of the cones are hollow, some of them are more solid. Uh, so it's really important to use the correct nozzle um, and have your burner tuned uh, to the nozzle that it's supposed to be using, um, because that's going to make it the most efficient, right? Um, when your when your fuel oil is coming out of this, um, again, if your if your pump pressure is reduced because of a clogged filter or screen okay it's going to be kind of like a windex bottle bottle where you uh, don't give it full pressure if you just squeeze a little bit it's not going to come out with a full mist right so this is the same type of thing uh, or if the if the nozzle is clogged or partially clogged you're not going to get the same uh, spray pattern right so you've got a burn chamber and we'll look at that in the next video where we clean the boiler um, and the idea is the spray pattern or the nozzle pattern should essentially uh, fill that burn chamber uh, to the appropriate uh, amount so that you can have the most efficient uh, burn possible um, and that's what you're shooting for right now obviously we're not doing a, a, any diagnostics where we're actually you know measuring the output of the uh, the stack or anything uh, but just to give you an idea of how all of this works together and how important it is uh, there's also an air gate uh, kind of like carburation right there's got to be if you're going to have uh, fuel you've got to have air 
Uh, and so there's also a mixture of air that's involved. Uh, and All right, it was brought to my attention uh, in one of the other videos in this set that it would be a good idea to show how to set these points, uh, which I didn't do. So I'm just going to display this uh, manual page here, but I'll include a link to both the, the boiler manual and the burner manual down in the comment section so you can check out the full manual. And again, be sure to uh, download the manual on your specific burner uh, as it may be uh, slightly different. And again, you don't have to go you know, gangbusters on it or anything. Okay, again, this only goes really one way. Well, it could go um, a different way, but obviously you want your set screw to sit into that divot. And then you know you have it in the right position. All right. Let's go get this thing installed, and then we'll move on to cleaning the actual boiler itself. All right, let's get this installed here. Now, you'll have to sort of spin it up this way to get this uh, supply line in buy everything and then just kind of twist it and turn it until you feel it seat in there and I think we just got it. We've got the Phillips screw that goes here And again, don't go crazy tightening everything down. Just kind of make sure everything's snug and fits where it's supposed to. Okay, we've got this cover here. And this can be a little bit of a pain sometimes. Just kind of push the wires out of the way and slide it in. And you know you have everything lined up correctly when it looks like that, right? You shouldn't have to force it. So hopefully this video has been helpful. Hopefully the whole series, the whole video series will be helpful. Um, it's one of those things, you know, if your furnace is going to run more efficiently, it's going to save you money. Your home is going to be heated uh, more easily. And it's important to kind of know how this stuff works, I think. Okay, now we just need to get this back down into where it belongs. And we may have bent it. You can see I bent this one a little bit getting it out of there. Just make sure it's straight on because it's a it's a flange fitting, a flared rather. And this was a 12 millimeter. So hey, thanks for watching. What we're doing next is we're going to be doing boiler cleaning itself. We're going to clean the boiler, which is not the funnest uh, part of the job. But we're on the home stretch here, okay? And then we've got a control box. Remember, this has got to be loose over here, and you want to. Uh, one on the outside of this little slot. And you want to tip, tip it down. You've got these electrodes here. Those electrodes go into here. Okay, there is an eye too. I should mention uh, basically a sensor. Um, it's a good idea to clean that off as well. Um, and I will just wipe it down, but I can tell that right now it's not bad. Um, usually I spray some, some cleaner and kind of wipe that down, okay? So, let's get this tip down here, and then snap it into place. I like to tighten it down. It's funny, when I have my boiler service, sometimes I find this screw's not tightened down, the burner housing's not tightened down, they just kind of, don't worry about it, I guess, but I like to put everything back the way it's supposed to be, okay? Hey, thanks for giving me that thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and be sure to watch to the end because I'm going to link to the entire playlist, and next we're going to clean this boiler, uh, which is the messy part of the job. But I've got a little trick in terms of um, making sure that the dust doesn't infiltrate your uh, home or garage or basement. All right, on to the next one. Keep watching.